Welcome to Down the Road. Good to have you along with us. I've got a lot of things to cover today. We do. Obviously, I haven't spoke to you since the hearing on January 6th, uh, the very hearing that, uh, well, is getting a lot of attention by the committee that's looking into uh, the events of January 6th, the attempted, well, the insurrection and the attempted coup of our of our nation, of our democracy. I'm going to bring in uh, someone that I know is near and dear to me and someone that uh, many of you voted for, former United States Senator Heidi Heitkamp. Good to have you on, Mary Catherine. Thank you, Joel, for having me. Not many people use your real name, so I just wanted to be one of the few that don't, okay? <laughs> well, if you really knew me as a child, you'd call me Kathy. Yep. But That's what Dad always called you, was Kathy. I don't know anybody that called you Mary. Uh, -uh. Yeah. I, I mean, back then, you know, when you grew up in a Catholic family, there was always a Mary Beth or a Mary Ann, and they always went by their middle name. You yeah. know. See, for me, if we went by the names that Dad called me, uh, we'd lo <laughs> <laughs> we'd lose our license. There's no, there's no question about that. That's not true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Heidi, obviously, one of the big issues this week was the hearing uh, that was held in uh, D.C., uh, the committee that Nancy Pelosi put together that uh, two Republicans volunteered to join uh, and be on that committee. So it's a bipartisan committee made up of both parties. But there's some tough issues, tough issues that they had to take a look at. You have been, in, and it's been my experience, and knowing as much as many law enforcement officers as what I do, you have always been in lockstep and, and dating back, I suppose, pre-Attorney General, but with Attorney General as a chief law enforcement officer for the state. I mean, you you, you probably have as, as many law enforcement fans and, and friends as you can possibly have, Hyde. So it must have hurt to see these guys uh, testifying at this hearing. Well, you know, the other thing that hurts is I know a lot of these guys. In fact, Eugene Goodman was one of my best pals, the guy who led um, them away from the Senate. And a lot of uh, Capitol Police are, in fact, African-American. Um, but what I want to point out is most of them are veterans. Um, and for right-wing uh, talking heads who risk nothing other than their reputation every day, um, for them to criticize these men who were beaten, who were defending our democracy, defending the Capitol, is absolutely the most atrocious thing that I've seen um, on, on any kind of news programming. Uh, it just boggles the mind that no matter where you are with, with the election or w how you feel about President Trump, you should be applauding these brave men for their um, work on that day. And when the officer, when Officer Dunn said, look, we, knowing what we know today, we would show up on January 6th and do it all over again. Yeah. Those are, that's the law enforcement I know that does their job. They do it to the best of their ability. Do they always get it right? No, but let me tell you 99.9% .9 of all the people who put on a uniform and wear a badge are good servants of the public and um, to suggest otherwise to denigrate them like Laura Ingram did I, I just don't I can't imagine that people watching her would buy into that or wouldn't have some pushback to her well when she calls when she calls the, the especially the officer who was beaten I mean we saw the video he was beaten he had three children he was he was basically thinking he was going to get killed with his own weapon to say he was a crisis actor or a method actor what is wrong with her yeah exactly and and she's one of the same individuals that prior to all of this was telling everybody every night on Fox News that blue lives matter blue lives yeah. matter uh, blue lives matter until you don't like the message that they have to say uh, that uh, that the visual said the, the body cam said I mean the man had to scream out I have kids I mean he, with the one hope of maybe that will save me I mean you know I have kids I, I can't imagine I mentioned that this was a, a bipartisan committee which really drives Republican nuts I mean, it, they wanted this to be nothing but a, a Democratic committee. And so Liz Cheney uh, joined this committee and isn't afraid to ask tough questions. Is it safe to say, Heidi, that you would never vote for Liz Cheney and she'd never vote for you? Fair? Well, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, she is one of the most conservative members of the United States Congress. Period. Plain and simple. Yeah. But let's take a look at clip number one here, guys, and, and make sure Heidi gets a chance to hear this. On January 6th and in the days thereafter, almost all members of my party recognized the events of that day for what they actually were. One Republican, for example, said, quote, what is happening at the U.S. Capitol right now is unacceptable and un-American. Those participating in lawlessness and violence must be arrested and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. No member of Congress should now attempt to defend the indefensible, obstruct this investigation, or whitewash what happened that day. We must act with honor and duty and in the interest of our nation. Well, the honesty is there, the opening statements there, and she knew the price she was going to pay for being on this committee. It's, you know, I go back to what I said. We're not the same politically, but as far as I'm concerned, that's political courage, Heidi. Well, you know, she's somebody who understands in for a penny, in for a pound. I mean, she can't kind of um, be where she's been on impeachment and on what happened on January 6th and not finish the job. I mean, I think that her her vision now is about legacy. It's about when when this is, you know, 20 years down the line and we even learn more, we're learning more today about the pressure that the Trump administration put on the Department of Justice to say that the election was fraudulent, even though they couldn't find any proof that it was fraudulent. You know, um, you're, we're going to hear more and more. And I've always said this about Liz, Liz Cheney, and I don't know if it's true, but this is pure speculation on my part. But you may recall that her father led a letter to the editor, I think in the Washington Post, with a number of Pentagon um, uh, uh, former Pentagon officials, um, her father obviously being very involved in the in the Department of Defense in his day in politics, and um, basically warning that the military should stay out of this. You know that 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 this is not a place for the military to participate um, as it related to the actual election. I think that he knows something about what was going on in the Department of Defense, and I've always thought he shared it with his daughter. And so I think she has some inside information that lead, that drives her to, to continue to try and get to the bottom of this and make sure that the public all understand what, in fact, was happening um, on on the all the events leading up to 1-6, um, but also, um, you know, the aftermath, um, what happened in terms of the pressure. And so I, I just think that she shows amazing grace. She is so incredibly articulate. Um, and I think she, she it, it just absolutely drives the Republicans crazy that someone who's more conservative than most of the people, including Kevin McCarthy, is willing to stand up for democracy. But the moment where Officer Dunn said, why, yes, she has political courage, and yes, I laud that, but why does it take courage to tell the truth? Why, why, is, why is the truth, you know, trying to find the truth, something that we have to reward? It should be something that we do every day. It, well, exactly. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, you see it. It, it. You know, the spin was out there right away in the beginning, Heidi. It was. It was Antifa. It was Black Lives Matter. It was orchestrated by the left. Then you find out once the individual stories come out that these are people that, that, that quite frankly have a long history of being Trump supporters. These are individuals that came that day, and it's clear that they came that day uh, to, to sit and wait at the command of the man that they idolize. I mean, who comes with, with pepper spray? Who comes with bear spray? Who, who comes with uh, things that can hide who you are? Who comes with sticks? Who comes with all of that stuff unless they're ready for a fight? and the fight that they want, that they can be the aggressor on. And so it, it's my personal belief, and I think many agree with me, that this was orchestrated. And they don't want this dug into because they might find out what was happening behind the scenes. So there's an individual here in the media in, in Fargo that tried to spin that this was Antifa. He tried to spin that there was no role of the president here. And he was one of the individuals that orchestrated people getting there. And, and so there, there's nobody that wants to look in the mirror and say, you know what, 
this was wrong. I goofed up. And this it, hearing can put them in a position where they would have to do that, Heidi. You know, it, it's interesting because they haven't figured out what their message really is. So they say, Nancy Pelosi is responsible for the security breach. We want to know what briefing she received. I said, go ask Mitch McConnell. He got the exact same briefing Nancy got. Um, so if you want to know what the briefing was beforehand, Mitch McConnell was just as responsible for um, oversight on security that day. Then they say, oh, these were just tourists. These were good citizens. Well, then why are you so interested in the security breach if they're good citizens and there wasn't really anything that went wrong? And and the other piece of this is that going to protest um, on, on behalf of people who basically beat down the window and climb through the windows of, this, of the, our nation's capital looking to uh, find members of Congress and uh, do whatever they were going to do. Somehow it's okay to stand and, and protect them. So what is, what, what is this party of law enforcement, this party of law and order? I mean, it, a little consistency, and there's no consistency in their message on this. Was it an insurrection? Wasn't it? Was there a security breach? Wasn't it? And it's interesting, Joel, because there's a lot of yak about the two members that Nancy rejected, that Speaker Pelosi yeah. rejected. Now we're finding out probably the reason why she rejected is the, the potential for subpoenas um, uh, to both of those individuals to appear before the committee. All right. And, and it's clear that that's the case. I had uh, Congressman Armstrong on with me today on my radio show, and, and I asked him why. You know, why wouldn't you serve? It's clear that Jim Jordan would have taken this to a whole nother level in terms of partisanship. But, you know, the, the answer is there is very consistent. I mean, they want to make sure that this didn't happen in a way that was seen as bipartisan. They didn't think there was going to end up being two Republicans on this committee. They didn't. They didn't think there was going to be two Republicans on this committee with, uh, with the ability, after putting their right hand to God and taking an oath, to be able to speak out against an insurrection like this. And it, it, it's, I have no doubt it's driving them nuts, but here's the thing. Uh, the, hearing, the hearing has been honest. These people have a right to be heard, and our congressman from North Dakota did say that today. He did say these individuals have a right to be heard. He didn't like the committee. I think that the committee was set up, that the members were suggested to do just exactly what happened uh, so that they could say that, you know what, it, it's all Democrats. Well, it's not all Democrats. It's Republicans as well. Stick around. Uh, we've got more with uh, Heidi Heitkamp, former United States senator from the great state of North Dakota, right after this. Howdy, folks. It's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. August 7th helped to set the world record for number of paddle craft on the Cheyenne River. Launch from Valley City or Fort Ransom State Park at 10 a.m. Central Time. See all the details and register at hellovalley.com. Hunter Ellis here for Night Hero Binoculars by Atomic Beam. These binoculars let you see anything, even in pitch black darkness. Gotcha. The secrets are powerful wide angle atomic beam laser that reveals objects up to 150 yards away hidden by darkness. During the day, Night Hero gives you 10 times magnification. And when the sun goes down, press the Night Bright button to see clearly in the dark. Light up garbage eating critters or spot thieves before they even get close. Call or click now and get Night Hero binoculars for just $39.99. Order right now and you can double it. Plus, get our best-selling atomic beam flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship them to you free. This TV special offer is not available on Amazon. You can get it all, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-619-1091. That's 1-800-619-1091. Or visit ByNightHero.com. That's ByNightHero.com. Order now. <laughs> 
Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury, after taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. Non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Welcome back to Down the Road. We've got former United States Senator Heidi Heitkamp with us. We're talking about the January 6th hearing that's going on uh, where they're looking at the, the insurrection, uh, where they're taking a hard look at exactly what happened that day, the bipartisan committee that was put together by Nancy Pelosi. There's some things that we want to show you. Uh, one of the officers talked about that day versus his servant, uh, service in Iraq. I, I want to see clip number five. So my, my time compared to Iraq, totally different. This is our own citizens, people who we sworn an oath to protect, but yet they are attacking us uh, with the same flag that they claim to represent. It was bad. You know, a lot of times, Heidi, we sit there and tell people thanks for their service. He just told us uh, about different ways that he served. I mean, can you believe that he's being criticized? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that there is just no shame. There is no shame from anyone who thinks that their primary mission in life is to defend President Trump. Your primary mission, all of our primary missions as citizens, is to... Um, honor those people who have served us, whether it's in a blue uniform, in a squad car, or whether it's in a in fatigues in in in, a, in the desert. And for people to who profess to be great citizens who have sworn allegiance not to this country and not to the men and women who serve this country, but to one man, I do not understand it. I do not understand it. Well, when, when you take a look at this, these men feared for their life. I mean, they did. They feared for their life. Uh, in fact, when we talk about courage, we talk about guns. I, I want you to take a listen to this one as well, Heidi. Give me clip number two, guys. Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger are being lauded as courageous heroes. And while I agree with that notion, why? Because they told the truth? Why is telling the truth hard? I guess in this America, it is. Us four officers, we would do January 6th all over again. We wouldn't stay home because we knew it was going to happen. We would show up. That's courageous. That's heroic. You can't get more passionate than that. And I would argue, Heidi, you can't get more honest than that. Yeah, I, you know, the, the, the reality is that, that all these officers were saying that they were taking guns and weapons off people in the crowd all day long. And they knew that if they uh, responded with any kind of um, uh, direct firearm, any, uh, any kind of direct firearm um, in, engagement, that it would just start a firestorm. And so yeah. when people say they should have used lethal yep. methods, they did a terrific job with the resources that they had. You bet. I, I get it. Uh, and and there, there's a fear there as well as to what could happen to, to them. Uh, I want you to, to take a listen to this, Hyde, clip number six of whether or not they, well, think about being in their position and wondering if you have a family and whether you're going to die or not. It was a prolonged in desperate struggle, the rioters attempted to breach the Capitol were shouting, Trump, send us. 
pick the right side. We want Trump. I vividly heard officers screaming in agony and pain just an arm length from me. I didn't know at that time, but that was Officer Hodges. And he's here today to testify. I too was being crushed by the air riders. I could feel my, myself losing oxygen and recall thinking to myself, this is how I'm going to die, defending this entrance. I can't imagine why people, uh, as they criticize these four men, can't just take a step back and try, try to put themselves in these individuals' shoes, Heidi. Well, did, did you see um, the, the officer um, went on uh, a, a CNN, I think it was, and played an audio tape of a phone message that was left for him that was vulgar and vile. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, do you, I, I want everybody to think about this. Do you think they want to relive these horrible moments of their life over and over again? The answer is no, they don't. They want to move beyond. They want to get over the, the uh, post-traumatic stress that they're now experiencing. And, and they're only reliving these moments because they're passionate about our democracy and passionate about um, the work that they do protecting our democracy. And so it, it, it's insult on top of injury, Joel, because none of these officers want to relive that. None of them want to tell a story. None of them want to break down and almost cry in a congressional hearing. That's not who they are. They're tough, tough people. And um, I think they have laid it all out emotionally um, because they want to to understand what actually happened and they want to prevent it from ever happening again. Yeah, well, imagine going home to the person that you love the most. Imagine going home to your wife, to your family, your clothes are covered in chemical, you don't know what they are. You don't know what's on them. And then you push them away because you're fearful of what you might do to them. Uh, take a listen to clip number seven here. I arrive home at nearly 4 a.m. on January 7th. I had to push my wife away from me because she wanted to hug me. And I told her no, because of the other chemical that I, my uniform had it on. I couldn't sleep because the chemical reactivated after I took a shower and my skin, skin was burning. I finally fell asleep two hours later, completely physically and mentally exhausted. Yet by 8 o'clock a.m., I was already back on my way back to the Capitol. And I continued to work for 15 consecutive days until after the inauguration. I made sure to work despite, despite my injuries because I wanted to continue doing my job and help secure the Capitol complex. More than six months later, I'm still trying to recover from my injuries. Well, that obviously says a lot. Uh, and it says a lot of things. I think you would think that people could connect with, with that. You've been in a hearing room. You, you've, you've been a prosecutor. You've been a lot of things in your life. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, if you were in that room, and you were one of the individuals that got to ask the questions, where would you put your focus? I think um, my focus would be let them have their voice, let them explain what it was like so that we get beyond this. It was just a tourist day in, this, in the nation's capital. Um, but I think it also confronts um, the issue of who were these people and why did they come? And what did you know about them um, as you were in the struggle? Because there's this idea that it, that people just got whipped up in the moment. And I, I, I'm with you, Joel. I think that there that that maybe about 50% of the people were just kind of carried through in the moment. But I think the vast majority, or that that at least 50% of the people who stormed the Capitol went there with the idea that they were going to do that and that they were going to. Um, uh, uh, effectuate some kind of change. Um, you know, one of the things that I always remind people is they trash the parliamentarian's office in the Senate. 
Okay, why would you do that? Because they were looking for the balance. They, and, and you can't find the parliamentarian's office very easy. They had cased it out. And um, my friend Lee, who's the assistant parliamentarian, had actually grabbed the box with all the ballots, you know, the certifications from the state, and hit them. I mean, she had the wherewithal to remember to do that. And they couldn't find those, that, that all important box that can carried those election results. But this was, I mean, I'm not saying everybody who was in the Capitol that day was uh, in an orchestrated movement, but there were definitely people there who were there to do mischief and to do harm and knew exactly what they were looking for. And I think that's what you want to ask these officers. What did you hear? What did you see? Um, what, what, uh, how, how can we better understand the, the very various shades of um, involvement of the crowd itself? And, and I think they're trained observers. They were in the battle, they were in the fight. They've been in the military. And I think they understand when they're confronted by people who are military trained. Well, they were told to. They yeah. were told to do what they did. That's they were told in code, they were told directly. They were told to do what they did. And you can use one little clip, no different than what you can use a little clip of, hey, you should get vaccinated, versus everything else that was said by the President of the United States of America and his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and a congressman from the United States Congress. We've got, I mean, Heidi, you've got a congressman that is holding a bench as a barricade against the door that later on says these were nothing but tourists. <laughs> I, you, you, you know, I think everybody should kind of think about the fact that these officers who lived the terror of that day directly, uh, you know, the Congress was whisked away and protected by these very, by, by, by all four of these men, plus everybody else standing with them. So they live the horror of the day and they're willing to talk about it and they're willing to, to, to express this. But there are people in Congress who aren't willing to even watch the hearing, Mitch McConnell and Kevin Car McCarthy, because they know if they watch it, Perhaps they'll experience some shame and realize that it's time to get to the bottom of what happened. You know, what's interesting is people haven't talked enough about the two pipe bombs, the one that was placed at the RNC and the one that was placed at the DNC. There was obviously an orchestrated movement uh, or an attempt for diversion to bring law enforcement away from the Capitol, bring law enforcement away from the rally. I, you know, and that was not successful. I think if we find out who was responsible for those pipe bombs um, and what which one of these I think paramilitary ultra right-wing white supremacist groups were responsible for those pipe bombs we're gonna get go a long way to figuring out how coordinated and orchestrated this is yeah. Heidi always love it when you give us some time to visit about this and I'm sure uh, during the course of these hearings, we'll be doing this more. So appreciate you coming down the road with and us. Please, please, everybody watch him. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's an important moment in our history. It's an important to, for everybody to understand. Don't say they aren't worth watching. I think that they will find them compelling. And I think it's really important that the American public um, be uh, brought along in, and understand what happened. You bet. Couldn't agree more. Thanks for coming down the road with us. You bet. When we come back, we're going to head to NDSU. We're going to talk about the drought, and we're going to talk about where we sit in North Dakota right here as we continue our trek down the road. Hey, everybody, I'm Doug Billings, your host of The Right Side with Doug Billings on Beck News. We bring you high-profile guests, ladies and gentlemen, exclusive guests. Now, you're not going to see these guests in most of the mainstream media outlets. Another thing that I do here is give guests a platform to speak freely. You're not going to see me censor anybody. Please join us, won't you? Weeknights right here on Beck TV and online at Beck.News. Cheers. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.
Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three cool turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more cool turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real cool turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news. Could you do us a favor? Beck TV is a finalist for Best Local TV Station in the Bismarck Tribune's Best of the Best. Vote now through August 9th by text or online. Vote for your leader in local, Beck TV. Welcome back to Down the Road. Kevin Sedovic is our, our guest. He is an extension rangeland specialist at NDSU. I want to get a chance to visit with him about some of the drought conditions and, and what he's seeing out there. Kevin, good to have you coming down the road with us. Well, thanks for having me on, Joel. I, you know, during this week, I, I drove out in a motorhome to the state fair, and what I saw just left me shaking my head. And it it was worse in some areas, but it was bad in almost most areas. Uh, what are you seeing? Because you get a chance to see more things around the state than I just saw. Sure. I mean, literally 100% of North Dakota is in a drought, and 97% is in a D2 or what's called a severe drought or worse. And so the, the odd thing about this drought is that the whole state, for the most part, is experiencing this drought. And so ranchers in particular, and sometimes some of the years, it might be half the state. But this year, it's the entire state. And what, what we're seeing is, is over 50% of our producers are going to produce half of normal forage production. And roughly half of that are going to produce 25%. That's how bad it is this year in North Dakota. Well, I was I was watching uh, hay get cut, or I shouldn't say hay. That's a pretty loose word. Cattails, for example, get cut in areas where I'll bet you they haven't been cut for years. I mean, that's normally wetland area uh, that these guys were getting after. And then... And then you go down the road. I mean, I've lived here a long time. You've lived here a long time. You go down the road and you, you know how often you would see a bale, you know, and there's maybe two round bales for a half section of land. I mean, they're not, maybe even more. I mean, they're not getting any hay out there. No, the, the numbers I've looked at, and I've covered most of the state, is North Dakota is gonna produce about 40% of normal hay production this year, 40%. So producers are looking for anything they can put up to put in a bale to feed these cows. And, and, and it's just, it could be a cattail slough or a cattail hay. It will still make a round bale. And as long as they have some way to feed that in, in, a, in a mixed ration, they're gonna put it up because of the need for hay. So, you know, some of my buddies that, that raise cattle, the ranchers, they've been selling off pears. And the, the thing that's really got them ripping their hair out is that people don't understand when they sell off pears like that, they've been building these herds up that uh, you know they, they've got the genetics they want and that you just can't go to a sales barn and, and start building a herd up the way you want it uh, built up. De describe that to people because I know you understand it. Yeah, I mean, producers, you know, even at the research station where I'm the director at, you know, we spend years and years to produce a uniform set of cattle that will do well in the market. And, and then you get to these times of, the, of, the, of a year where you, you, don't ha you have to sell, either sell cattle or you overgraze your pastures. 
And with most producers, they've let run out of feed. So they have to sell cattle. And it's tough for a producer to give up some of that good genetics, you know, and so it's just, it's tough for them to do, you know, there's always room for some culling within these herds. But when you get into your good, your good stock, you know, it just hurts a producer and you, it takes years to come back to those, ca those cattle you sell because you get into these hard times. So what can happen? I know that there are people mad at the Biden administration because they haven't given the okay yet to open up uh, certain lands uh, for haying. What can happen? What's out there, Kevin, that isn't being taken advantage of? You know, that's a tough question. I think right now our producers are very resilient and they're taking advantage of everything they can. And there's been a lot of producers waiting for CRP to open up next week, Tuesday. And the caveat is, you know, we're going to put up a lower quality feed because of the, of the time period that we lost. The, the nice thing is it's still going to put a bail up and it's still going to be feed that they can do something with to feed it off. But the caveat is, is those low quality feeds, whether it's a cattail slew, whether it's CRP put up late, um, is going to have, not have the qualities. So now they got to invest in protein and energy to supplement those low quality feeds just to get by. And with the price of cattle, the price of hay, uh, your margins just become less and less when you got to put all those costs into that feed. When I rode to Sturgis one time, I saw more alfalfa than I had ever seen before in uh, in western South Dakota. And I asked some of the South Dakotans, this is, you're going to sit there and shake your head and say, why didn't you know this, High Camp? But I, I saw, you know, a lot of alfalfa being used as a cash crop in those areas, which I understood after I talked to that rancher for a while. Uh, but that's not going to be made available. That's not going to find its way to town or North Dakota. Um, so that means money out of their pocket as well. I mean, it, this this is going to have an economic effect on j not just the dry, the really dry areas. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the struggle we're having this year is one you got to find hay, and when you do find hay, it's really expensive. I mean, alfalfa right now is twice what it's valued. The twice is, is worth twice as much this year than it was last year. Grass is worth at least twice as much. The odd thing is, is low quality feeds like wheat that that failed, rolled up in the bale, is selling for three times the normal value, just because it's a cheaper feed source and producers then can at least afford it, knowing that it's low quality. That's just how tough it's going to be. If you're putting up alfalfa this year, you can make some money in the alfalfa business. The caveat is you probably only put up half the normal production as most years. Yeah, the problem is you got to have alfalfa. You right. know, you're not going to get that second cutting or that third cutting like you'd hoped. No. Uh, what what happens if tomorrow it starts raining? What happens with some of these pasture lands if, if we get that bounce? That's a great question. And what people don't realize in North Dakota, we grow our grass in the months of May and June. So we rely on that spring moisture and early summer moisture to grow our pasture grass and our hay production. So we can get all the rain we want in July and August, and now July's almost gone. What it will do is green up your pastures and give you a little higher quality feed, but you won't grow a whole lot more grass. What you have today is for the most part what you're gonna have for the rest of the year, but it might get greener so quality will increase, which is a plus. And it makes people feel better to see a greener pasture than a brown pasture. But they need to understand that they might get another 10%, maybe 20% more growth from these late season rains because we grow more square grass early in the season. You know, we talked a lot about cattle uh, today, Kevin. What about sheep? What what about that industry? Because, you know, you, you drive by certain uh, pasture land where the, the sheep had been turned out and you normally saw, uh, you know, less uh, tall grass anyway. Uh, where is that at? What what about the, the sheep farmer? You know, we're seeing the same issues with whether you're grazing sheep and we see it with goat producers. I mean, one of the biggest growing industries in North Dakota is goats. And uh, there's goat producers that are traveling all the way to Nebraska to buy hay. So whether you've got horses or cattle or sheep or, if, you know, the, the whole combination, we're all in the same boat and we're all struggling uh, with lack of production this year and for the price of hay to be affordable. And so it, it's just all producers who are raising livestock this year are going to feel it, uh, not only in, in their herd, but also in the pocketbook and, and in just in, in, their, in their mind and health because it's just tough times. See, I think what we needed was somebody like you to make the determination of whether or not certain grasslands got opened up uh, or whether or not the middle of the interstate should have been able to be bailed. You know, I'm sitting here as a, a man that at 12 years old, I was carrying a shotgun going after pheasants, right? There's a lot of concern about, you know, whether or not, uh, 
you know, we're gonna we're gonna be hard on the pheasant population or whatever. I don't care. I mean, it, it, that may sound cold and heartless, but I don't care. I can skip hunting for a year, and the pheasants will come back at some point. But if these guys need hay, Kevin, they should get hay. Yeah, you know, I was kind of disappointed, and, and you know, I have no say in what goes on in terms of when CRP's opened up. I was hoping it got up, got opened up earlier because one, it gives you better quality. But what people also don't realize is that grass actually lose tonnage. As it gets dry, like we're seeing now, the leaves shatter. And so we probably have less biomass today than we had two weeks ago because of the dry, hot weather that we've experienced over the last month. You know, Kevin, thanks for what you do. Uh, you and everybody at NDSU, these guys need you now more than ever. I, I appreciate you coming down the road with us. Thanks, Joel. I appreciate the opportunity. You bet. I'm going to give you some comments on the hearings, on a lot of things uh, in relation to what's happened this week when we come back down the road. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan. And yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. You know, for you individuals that are sitting there and talking about whether it's over a cup of coffee, whether it's over a beer, but you're sitting there and letting your partisanship determine whether or not this committee looking at January 6th is valid or not. You know what? Shame on you. Shame on you. You know, the very people that are criticizing in D.C. this committee hearing in regards to getting to the bottom of what happened January 6th, those very same people voted against a bipartisan separate commission to take a look at this. Those very same people said this process isn't good. We can't do it which basically would have ended the whole check and balance in regards to what happened. And then they criticized Nancy Pelosi using her ability to use a committee to try to dig into this. This isn't the method she wanted. 
this isn't the method she wanted. This is not how she wanted it to go. She wanted there to be a commission, a separate commission. So it wasn't playing out in the halls of Congress. So that work was being done. But that wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough for the Republican side of the aisle and, of course, the Republican media, the very same media that are criticizing these officers. So this is the only vehicle that can be used to take a hard look at what happened. And if you're wondering what happened, you take a, you just take a little listen and a view of, of cut number three here. We are not asking for medals, for recognition. We simply want justice and accountability. For most people, January 6th happened for a few hours. But for, but for, all, for those of us who work, were in the thick of it, it has not ended. That they continue to be a constant trauma for us literally every day, whether because our physical or emotional injuries or both. While it has not received much attention, sadly, Many of my colleagues have quietly resigned from the Capitol because of that day. As an immigrant to the United States, I'm especially proud to have defended the U.S. Constitution and our dem democracy on January 6th. I hope that everyone in the position of authority in, this, in our country has the courage and conviction to do their part by investigating what happened on that terrible day and why. They didn't want that heard. They didn't want that to be made public. That statement that he earned the right to say. As an immigrant to this country, he's the one that defended the Constitution. He is. Those individuals that don't believe in the halls of Congress that this conversation needed to be happened. Those individuals that said these are nothing more than tourists that are walking through. Those individuals are the ones that put their right hand to God, swore to uphold the Constitution, and then lied. That's who those individuals are. So when, when you hear the emotion in Congressman Kinziger's voice, when you see the emotion that happens, remember those guys. Remember those four law enforcement officers, the two Capitol Police and the two D.C. Police. Remember them. Because when the congressman said, you guys held this comes from a man who served this country in a uniform as a soldier. As a soldier. And he looked at those four men and got emotional when he said, you guys held. And you might say, well, if they held, then why are they walking around the halls of the Capitol? Right? I've heard that said. Their job was to protect the very people who are now acting as those individuals were tourists. Because understand this, if they would have gotten to Nancy Pelosi, if they would have gotten to Mike Pence, they would have killed him. They would have killed them because it was their belief that that's what they were sent to do. That this election was about to be certified. That their man, that they idolized, was no longer going to be president once this election was certified. And the only way in their eyes to get after it was to break through the doors of the Capitol and take it away from them. Take the ability to do it away from them. That's why they brought the pepper spray. That's why they brought the clubs. That's why there were pipe bombs. And don't kid yourself, this was orchestrated. This was planned. And so those four individuals did hold. I want you to take a listen now to, to, to clip, uh, clip four. And j just, you owe it to yourself to hear this as well. Sense of duty for the country, for the Constitution, at that time was bigger than even my love for my wife and my, my son. I put that ahead. And for me, it's confounding that some people who have sworn off elected officials, including people in the military uh, that I seen at the lower stairs fighting against me. They swore an oath and they forgetting about that oath. They not putting the country before the party. And that's what bothers me the most. Because I, as a for, uh, former soldier, I know what that inherits, that oath. 
and I was willing, I'm still do, willing to do that. What did he just say? Think about what he just said. This is a man who looks at individuals that were out there that, that went after him, that used to be soldiers in this nation. There needs to be justice here. When we come back, I'll give you some closing comments as we end our trip down the road. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month, so call now and make going to the dentist carefree. Call 1-800-416-5739 to receive your Carefree Dental Card Information Kit. 1-800-416-5739. Call now. I can't say enough good things about these nano hearing aids. Real people talking about nano hearing aids. The hearing quality is great. Until now, hearing aids used to be too expensive for the average person. Until nano. Call now and you'll get your nano hearing aids for only $297. You'll save $100. When you buy one hearing aid, nano will give you a second hearing aid free. Call right now. 1-800-213-3815. Spas, etc. Yeah, yeah. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, chuckle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maiden and Bismarck. Calling all first responders. Join us Saturday, July 31st for First Responders Night at the Bismarck Event Center. The Bucks take on the Green Bay Blizzard with a 7.10 p.m. Central Time kickoff and will highlight those who serve and protect our communities. For more information on tickets, visit BismarckBucks.com and download your free general admission ticket today. Saturday, July 31st, it's the Blizzard versus your Bismarck Bucks. See you on the 31st. Go Bucks! Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury, after taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. So one question I'd like to ask you is, what does that do to you personally? When you see the clips of the hearing, when you hear what those officers said, when you, when you hear what they've gone through, when you listen and, and see the body cameras and you see an individual on the ground screaming, I have kids so that his life can be saved, when you see people People who think they're patriots bludgeoning law enforcement officers with the American flag. What does that do to you? If you're so in love with Donald Trump, do you just ignore that? I mean, do you? Do, do you just write it off? I mean, are you that dedicated to that man, that one American, that you're willing to just completely forget about it and say that the only reason it's still being talked about is for partisan reasons. Do you care? I mean, that is a fair question. Do you care? I mean, I could sit here and ask, okay, what if the roles were reversed? What if those were supporters of Joe Biden? What if those were supporters of Barack Obama? How would you react then? 
for all of you diehard Trump supporters, you people that, that were, you wanted him to win at any cost. For all of you, does any sense of patriotism kick in? Does any sense of decency kick in? Or do you just want to ignore it? Do you just want it to go away so you can make your other arguments? Do you just want to demonize the individuals that are bringing this forth? Liz Cheney is one of the most conservative members of Congress. Her father served at almost every rank of elected election in this country of elected office. I mean, th this is a man that was vice president of the United States. Dick Cheney is one of the most conservative, conservative members of this nation's politics ever. I didn't care much for him as vice president, but he and his daughter had the courage to come out against President Trump and what he's doing to this nation. If President Trump came out if he came out right now and said you should get vaccinated, the, a vast majority of these people would. They would listen to him if he said jump off a cliff. You're, you know, he believes they're lemmings, that they'll do anything that he wants. Are you one of those? Are you one of those individuals that is willing to just forget about it because it doesn't play into your narrative of who he is? Or all you have to say is he didn't do that. He didn't push that. Well, then why do you think they came to town armed the way they were? Why do you think they, in, in a lot of audio, in a lot of video from that January 6th insurrection, why do you think you hear them saying the president sent us here? Because they believe he did. The power that he has over them. That power is power he needed to use to stop this, and he didn't. He didn't. You got to make your choice, America or them. Good ride with you, folks. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world.